It's great to have you on, mate. And um, what what are you up to nowadays? Uh, I've just been grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting stream at the TV uh, for any subject. Uh, uh, that's about it, really. No, no, I'm, I'm busy in Scotland. Uh, right. I do a lot of things in Scotland. I've got three things. I've got a foundation that we, uh, helped to run here uh, with kids between 60 and 19 who leave school and have, I don't know where they're going in life. Um, so we use football as a starter tool for them. They, tr- they basically train as professional footballers for half a day, education for the rest of the day. Uh, we have about 80 kids. We, f- with, we thought about trying to make footballers years ago, they started 10 years ago, but we realised there's much more to it than this because we very rarely made footballers. Um, but the football lifestyle changed these kids that we work with, education-wise, self-respect, confidence, uh, and that has become the, the driving factor of people getting to the jobs and get the best out themselves. They all want to join the football world as footballers. Yeah. Then they realise it's a lot harder than what we thought, but we give them the opportunity to join with other things like sports analysis, physiotherapy, coaching, sports data, uh, journalism, uh, these kind of things. So. Gordon, are these, in the last, are these, in the last kids, 10 years, we've sent away about 500 kids into full-time employment. Oh, right. So these, these aren't kids that have come from clubs, like uh, like academies or anything like that? There'll be, there'll be a few. There'll be right. a few. But mostly the kids who have left school. And for whatever reason, school, <coughs> it didn't work out for them, for one yeah. reason or another. Or, good, still great kids, but still not sure what they want to do with life. Yeah. Uh, so we put them on our path. Um and they pick it up from there. But, but the, the facilities, it's like a professional football club when you go and see them working. We have great coaches. Lee Carsley pops in. I've got Steve Agruzovic there all the time. Kevin McDonald, Aston Villa. George Mackey who used to be a, um, the youth team coach at Coventry. And we've got two kids there who have come through the system and become coaches. So do that. That's what I do. Then I go to Scotland. I work at Dundee. And I'm just finishing something off with Celtic just now. Oh, brilliant! So you're still, but <coughs> excuse me. So you're still really busy, even within the game. Yeah, but it's all the good parts of the game. Yeah. It's all about developing kids, making people better, um, enjoying it, watching games, passing on information, working with coaches. So it's 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 the the good side of the game, the yeah. real smashing side of the game. What but, was the, the one part of management, Gordon, if you could just pick out one single skill that you enjoyed the most? I know it's, there's a lot that you have to lean on, yeah. but... Yeah. Was it the, the, the most single part I enjoyed about being a manager? Yeah, uh, the, the single skill you enjoyed the most, whether it be nurturing just, someone just, or... Just, just dealing with good football people and making them better. Um, why do you want to stay in the game? There are different reasons, uh, but for me, it was uh, to make people better. First of all, when I become a manager, it was to, to earn my living, keep working. But then I realised, I enjoy making people better and working with people and enjoy interacting with people. Uh, and that's why, even now, there's, there's three vehicles for me to, through the foundation, Dundee, Celtic and other things, to, to keep working with football people. Did you find when you were manager of Scotland, was that a lot harder than what you was expecting? As in, because you're not you're not training with people every day? No, I thought it was great. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, you, you have this thing, you, could, um, you had an international goalkeeper as a manager, that you have this wonderful feeling if, if you win games, you've made a whole nation happy. You know, there's, there's people in the streets come up, grannies, 80 year old, well done, son, that was great. <laughs> oh, thank you. So it gives you this kick, making people happy, going back to that thing about making people happy and and, and people enjoying the, the, the game of football. The, the other side is you can make them disappointed as well <laughs> in a big way at times. But it's, uh, I, I thought it was fantastic. And, and the good thing about international football, it's wonderful. You know, fine well, and um, uh, club football, Remember, there's one or two people you'd rather not have in your dressing room, unless it's a fantastic dressing room. There's one or two. They'll be at clubs just now. There's one or two you think, well, but you can't get rid of them because on the four or five-year contracts, 
ridiculous amounts of money. With Scotland, you just go, nah, I'm not picking them. And then <laughs> make some excuse like, does they fit the system? <laughs> <laughs> Is there less politics involved oh, with, with so, managing so, Scotland? Sorry? Would you say there's less politics involved with, with managing a, a national team like Scotland than a, a, a club, a league team? It, it's continuously keeping that group happy all the time. Continuously. Where Alan had to turn up every now and then. And generally, because of international football, most of them are in a good frame of mind because they've been picked. They're playing well for their club. So there's a, usually a, a more positive group in general. Uh, a, a, a top club like Arsenal or Man United, if you're leaving out 13 players, you've got 13 unhappy players. And you can see, as you see from the headlines recently, if you get one unhappy player, the noise and the, the kickback and the stress to the manager is horrific. But with the Scottish international team, you just go, right, no picking him. <laughs> when, you were, when you were a club manager... Were yeah. you one of those managers, though, that, that had this club versus country debate? You know, we don't want him to get injured, our star player, just be careful with them. Can you let them back a bit earlier? It's only a friendly. Did it change your, your mindset afterwards? But before that, were you, were you different in the way you thought about it? Uh, I've always been open-minded to uh, players playing for the country because uh, I had it myself, I know how you feel. Um, so I had it both sides. And I can see the problem is sometimes clubs have um, with players going to international duty. And to be fair, international duty now is not the same as it was 30, 40 years ago because the Champions League has overtaken everything. That's the most important thing in football. Forget international football, that comes occasionally. But for us as punters, Champions League football and Premier League, if you put it up for international football just now with Scotland and England, whatever it was, Jim, it comes Champions League Premier League, international football. So mm -hmm. it's only us with it, and it lives in the fluffy clouds, pink clouds. Can I say pink clouds? Um, well, clouds, <laughs> different clouds. <laughs> Any um, colour clouds. <laughs> so, well, um, that, uh, that you think international football is a be-all and end -all. It's fantastic. It really is fantastic, international football. It's a nice break. But let's face it. Everybody wants to see Champions League football, Premier League football, and that's become more of a pri priority um, now than it was 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. Even even when, when I was at Arsenal, Gordon, um, Arsene Wenger used to say, he used to give us this uh, piece of paper at the start of every season, and he would say to us, write in priority what you would like to win. And all the foreign players always put Champions League. Yeah. All the British players put the Premier League and then Champions League. You know, and that, but that's that's the sort of mentality that they brought. You know, they they wanted to win the Champions League more than anything else. Yeah, well, you, you were lucky you were at Arsenal. I was at Coventry in Southampton, and, and the, <laughs> the, the the results of these pieces piece of paper were completely different, David. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Avoid <Avoid> relegation. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, still in a job by next year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, the priority for the top top players that's what it is I'm afraid yeah then and speaking yeah, yeah speaking of, of Southampton you know Adam's a massive Southampton fan as you can you can tell um he did bring up last night and which I didn't realize that you were the you were the manager for Southampton in my last ever game I played for Arsenal which was a cup final is that your last ever game yeah what a way to go out I know <laughs> what a way to go <laughs> Well, it would have been if I'd have known at the time. Fact, before the game, you were that good, that Arsenal team, that I thought that was going to be my last ever game with Southampton as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, I liked all these people at the time. They go, oh, just go and enjoy it. It's a wonderful day. It's great. Really? I play against Perez, Henri, Bergkamp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm really going to enjoy that when, you're, you're, when they've got the ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we managed to go through it uh, physically and mentally unscathed. Um, that's <laughs> the that was your last game. But that's, yeah. that, that's David it. was not unscathed, were you, David? No, I wasn't because I, I I didn't know at the time, Gordon. You know, I, to be fair, I was um, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed in the summer, but. I've got to ask you. I know what you what you're on about now, Liz. It's just... you know? <laughs> oh no, here it comes. <laughs> how, how did so, you? But how do you not know, David? Everybody else knew. 
<laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it was true. I didn't know until I was in Lubichi, Portugal, and he phoned me up. But anyway, but what I do want to ask you about, and if you can remember, Arsenal played Leeds at Ellen Road. And do you remember standing over me and calling me a big Southern softy when I'd punctured my scrotum? <laughs> I remember I was I had a challenge with with um not uh, with who was it um striker Lee Chapman so he, he came in and challenged me and he stood mark started just above my knee went straight into my you know where and I was laid down and I remember you standing above me saying get up your southern softy and then the physio came on and he pulled my shorts to the side and there was a lot of blood all around my you know what and you went oh sorry big man. <laughs> You walked off, and I never forgot the, the that. Biggest, the biggest problem with that when you say scrotum, well, look, teacher, and went, what's a scrotum? <laughs> <laughs> the whole league team go, he's out of scrotum, what's a scrotum? I've no idea. Ball bag. It's near, it's near, it's near his bollocks, that's what <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I remember you for oh, that. Yeah, I'm very sorry. I'm no, sure. Not only that, though, but you played for. I've, I've been a Leeds fan all my life, mate, and um, you were you were in the team that actually won. Was it the last football league? I mean, yeah, the, we won the what you call the championship uh, yep. now, and the, uh, what you call the Premiership now. It was a football league at the time. That was the last one uh, before they got changed to this wonderful Premier League. Um, and the game has come on leaps and bounds in the thirty years, but that was the last one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had, you, yeah, because you had you had John Luke kicking goal, didn't you? Because that I took over him, and then he went to Leeds, and in his, I think he, that was his first season. He actually won the league. So that's right. I, again, I've been lucky to play with good goalies. John was, uh, uh, well, you know, John, a wonderful yeah. goalie, but easily yeah. the tightest man in the world. <laughs> I don't know that as well. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think a story about the boys went in Spain. Well, I didn't go; I was too old. But they all went about twenty of them, and the. Uh, they all put in ten pound each to get one of these speaker things. They'll buy the pool. Yeah. And John, John wouldn't put his ten pound in. The boy said, "What? Why not?" He said, "Well, I'm about to listen to it." <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. That's Lukey. That is Lukey. <laughs> what? Um, what are you making of the Southampton situation at the moment, Gordon? But to be fair, I, I I didn't know anything about it until last night when I seen they've been taken over. Yeah. Um, which is it's it's. Again, the most important thing is a club. Again, the club that you were with, with, with Dean and, and uh, David Dean and Arsene Wenger, the people at the top who run it, they set the standard for the rest of the club. Yeah. And I just hope that these people have got to set the standard for the rest of the club. It's been well run over the last 20, 30 years, Southampton. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes you get people at the top that are not that good. Mm -hmm. and, and it spreads its way down. You know, so if you get decent standards at the top, wonderful. So I'm just hoping it's. Uh, the standards that Southampton have set over the last few years will continue. Will continue, that's for sure. But I'm, I'm very rarely back there. Uh, it's a place that you actually specifically have to go to Southampton to get it. You know, there's other cities and I'm passing Leeds or popping and see someday. I wonder it comes. It's very hard to get back there. Although I loved it. I mean, I, I, I think it's a fantastic place for people to learn their, their trade as a young footballer, a young player or a young manager. I think it's a fantastic place because they do give you time there. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a strange, strange, lovely place where, you know, if you, if you lose a corner kick at Celtic, it's, well, the four and you know, screaming <laughs> and shouting and, oh, you're muggy and he's got to go. It's Southampton, you can beat four nothing on Saturday. Gordon, how are you doing? Fine, good luck next week. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, very uh, understanding I think, I think we're used to it <laughs> no, we're so used to it you know in Glasgow Scotland where everybody's in your face telling you what you should be doing all the time as, as a team that's always sort of fought relegation and, and roundabouts I think I think most Southampton fans probably have that sort of gallows humour, if you know what I mean. It's just, it's part of the DNA of, of the club. We, we've always kind of been fighting. So, it, you know, it, it's not so much of an issue for us. No, no, but it's got more realistic in the last few years. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a continuity there. that you, you, I don't think anybody shouts Southampton when you talk relegation these days, you know. So I think that's, that's changed the perspective for the club. 
years ago they might have been forced in there, you know, when you're saying who's going to get early. It's no Southampton anymore because they've run properly, been run properly. And that's what we're saying. I just hope, hope this continues, this the, the way they've been running the club. Um, just looking at, you, at the dates, obviously you were there about 20 years ago, so you must have been the manager in charge when uh, Letizia retired. <laughs> <laughs> I think True Saints fan talking to you about Letizia. Yeah, he's absolutely a, a gem of a man and a, a, a genius with a ball at his feet. I mean, an absolute genius. Um, but I think after the first training session we had, it, Tiz decided that because he was going to retire. Um, <laughs> he, he actually had to. <laughs> he, he actually had to walk out the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I said, I said, I don't like this. It's a bit hard. I said, this is only the warm up. But, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was a bit too much for the big fella. Because the game was changing then, you know. Um, the, the, it, well, as I say, it's changing. When people talk about um, the fitness of Liverpool mindset and all these teams that go up to you now, Dortmund. I, I got that years ago that you had to be super fit to be a top player. Um, yep. And. <laughs> And uh, so the game was changing a wee bit. But they turned that Southampton team in from being bought in the league to going eighth and get playing in the final against the big fella. It was only because we, we, you know, the players were still there, but it made them fitter and stronger and more organised. But I've got to say, if you've got a young Letizia when he was younger and made him super fit, you're talking them multi-millions. Yeah. And another thing about him, which the thing is, what a wonderful man he is. I mean, he's a, a top, top fella. And going back to what you were saying, why do you enjoy the game so much? It was people like Tiz and all these people that made every day go to training well worth it. You know, there's a couple of backsides every now and then, but you just <laughs> put that aside, you know. But David will tell you, and anybody tell you what's in this wonderful game of football, who've even been in it for a while, will tell you it's the best business in the world. And what a wonderful place to do your, uh, to go every day, you know, and, and work. Is it said, how, how long have you been working? I said, I've never worked in my life since then. I milk round in Edinburgh. Mm. And yeah. I was 12, 12 and 15. Since then, I've been in the football world. That's no working. Yeah. It's getting paid to do something that you absolutely oh. love. And you get up every morning and go, oh, let's go to the training ground and meet the lads. And I was still the same as a manager. I still had this kind of, I want to meet people. And I don't think I had a training session for laughing at anybody. You know, or laughing yeah. at myself. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's quite simple, really. I don't take myself serious, but I take, do what what I do serious. You know, I take that serious. Yeah. So. When was the when was the happiest period of your career? <sighs> Whoa, good oh, good question. Oh, I really, honestly, it's all the way through. I've been laughing for fifty years. I think that's I, I couldn't tell you. And it being fair to, to say, well, it's it's at Leeds at Man United. I just enjoyed everybody's company everywhere I went. So it'd be unfair to say, oh, it's better at Leeds or Man United or Aberdeen or things like that. It's not to say, though, that it's it's necessarily better at one club or the other. We just all have those periods in life when everything comes together, like you're enjoying work, you're enjoying home life. You just have those periods sometimes where it, it feels a bit golden, doesn't it? Well, you just think there's a magical period in your life. There uh, are little, little periods. I don't know whether that was for you, David, but... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, straight away... The, the times that I always remember, the times when we, we were winning things. You know, and I would imagine that's the same with you, Gordon. It's like when you were at Aberdeen, you were winning a lot of stuff there, weren't you? Oh, well, what? Um, but Sir Alex made sure we didn't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Constantly reminding you how bad you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's his standards, mate. That's how he gets the best out of you. I know. It's just standing <laughs> in the North Sea. <laughs> with the waves up to your backside because you've got a sore ankle and it's snowing. Um, no, you know, listen, it, the, sometimes it, it, I spoke to Sir Alex a couple of months ago and he went, we're talking about things. And he was talking about the day, the day, the day he let me go at, uh, um, at Manchester United. It was early in the morning. And um, I said to him, and he went, I didn't do that, did I? I went, oh, you did. He said, oh, that was outrageous. I said, it was, yeah. But didn't worry about it. I thought it was hilarious. You know, when I look back at it, some of the some of the most horrible times in your career, to look back now and go, well, that is hilarious and funny. And everybody else finds it funny. So you can there's some sort of thing about a footballer can find everything funny. We find everything, even the strangest, strangest moments 
where sometimes our, our, our teammates are going through turmoil, but somehow we find that funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same that happens to us when we go through turmoil, like Sir Alex, I say, don't, don't even worry about it. I, I wouldn't yeah. have missed it for the world, some of these rollickings and things like that. I wouldn't have, I feel that I was lucky to be on the end of these. Very regular, <laughs> to be honest with you. It was, it was nearly every week, but I, I felt honoured because there's not many people who have had the hair dryer from Sir Alex, you know. Yeah. So I would probably say I've had more hair dryers than anybody else uh, from Sir Alex. And speaking of, of Sir Alex and Man United, what, what, do you, what are you making of the situation now? Oh, well, I turned it off at half time last night. <laughs> 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 well, you, yeah. you missed a great goal, God. <laughs> I, I, was, I was floating about trying to find anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was watching skiing from Australia or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> but I watched that because yeah. it wasn't enjoyable. It really wasn't enjoyable. And, and I think it's a wee bit sad when you see how good Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool are. Yeah. And to, to extent how well organised Wolves were. You know, so it's a wee bit sad. It was a wee bit sad and lifeless, um, and it's a it's a big it's a big job. That's for yeah. sure. Do you have a view on this this um, sort of German style of football, this this Gegen press that they call it? I mean, obviously, there's lots of teams that employ it in subtly different ways because City still do it, but there's more possession, there's more passing. But um, you know, this they, 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 there's different ways of doing it. They do it a different way. They go they go mm. up as a group, slowly go up as a group. Well, it's a counter attack, but if not the they're just used to people going in and sitting in there. So they get all these people up. But they, they, take, they actually choke a team to death because there are that many people run the ball. So when the, the other team lose it, they've got it back again and away they go again. So there's, there's different ways of doing it. You know, Dortmund's completely different. It's right in your face and all the rest of it. Man City sneak up on you, then it's kind of smothered you. Liverpool, it's kind of crash bang wall up. They've got that. Um, <laughs> So uh, there's different ways of doing it. And I, I think I was reading an article the day that somebody said they were playing a, a 4-2-2-2. They weren't they playing a bit. It was like an old-fashioned 4-4-2 because Sancho was up and down there. If you've got a heat map, Sancho... I've played against the 4-2-2-2 thing like, with, with Germany. Um, with had Muller, Gotza, closer playing. And it is boxes. It's like four boxes going up the pitch. And it, it wasn't like that. Um, what, what, so, can you read into it how, being a manager and knowing play is, is there a body language there is there a thing with United that you go these boys don't want to play like that or is it a case of these boys can't play like that yet they're not used to it can you, well, see you, you need to watch because I think you, when you get past a certain age or a certain level that you, habits like bad habits like good habits are good habits and getting them that, that pressing and getting used to it. so hard work to a, a, a good German player, a Liverpool player, or even uh, Alex Ferguson, uh, his thing was about hard work in Arsenal. It was hard work. It becomes habit, and that comes through the kids and all the rest of it. If your habits are, well, I don't really close down when I lose the ball, it's hard to shake it, you know. It really, so it's like an old dog new tricks kind of thing. It's, it's hard to shake it because, I, I was, you know, if you look at some of the Man United players, they're grease lightning going forward. But somehow they lose their pace when they're going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The stats don't lie, do they? You know, the, the stats show that they're not... they going that way. No, so yeah. good going that way. Yeah. Um, the modern day player can throw it all in, you know, and, and adapt. Um, and, and again, hard work is no hard work. But that's that's set out at the beginning of your 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 uh, your, um, your uh, career and hard yeah. work because so when yeah. later on in life. When you're still working away, it's like James Milner. Look at yeah, James exactly. Milner. Yeah. Look yeah. at James Milner. A beast of a man. <laughs> well, every 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 youth club, every youth setup or academy should go and ask, speak to him and get him to visit him and go, this is what I did as a kid. That's why at 36, 37, I'm still up there with this. That and ask him. Don't ask yeah. any or, or coaches for, who've never played the game and all the rest of it. Ask they type of players how they're still at the top. And he'll tell yeah. you he's working harder than anybody else. And, and actually, his technical level has come on. And because he's so fit, he keeps his technical level through games right to the last minute. Uh, yeah. you, as I said, it's, he's a dream. He's a dream for any youth coach. They really should be going to visit him and, and bring him into youth systems and say, this is how I did it. Yeah. 
Gordon, do you think do you think that the um, the Afcon situation is going to really affect Liverpool? I think it's it's affecting the the, the holy football just now. That's for sure because we don't really know. Is it managers? That my, my son is uh, it's Celtic, and sometimes you pick the team at twelve o'clock, and at one o'clock you have to change it. Yeah. You know because whatever they, they have their last test or whatever. It really is. It's a hard moment. It's a hard moment for everybody, uh, um, but it's, it's it's more so for for the football teams to get con- continuity. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, has it got to affect Liverpool? I think whatever's got to happen, the best team's got to win it, and it's got to be Manchester City. No matter what you're saying, I think you can probably pick holes in a couple of teams where they're, they're no strong. But Man City seem to have it. have got it all going on there. They've got the best group of players. Um, it seems to be that the, the, the whole group is managed brilliantly and uh, they have the, as I say, going back to it, they've got the best players and also yeah. it looks like they've got the best people as well because oh, you know, you know to, to, to be successful, and I keep going back there, to, you have to have good men round about you as well, whether you're a manager or a player or a goalkeeper, good men round it. There's nothing better when you're in the tunnel, you turn around and go, yeah, I'm glad you're all here and I think Man City are like that at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you can't you can't see them. We were chatting about this earlier about you know is it is it going to be boring now because nobody's going to get anywhere near Man City. But you know you, you can't see them even if they have a bad patch or a couple of the players have a bad patch. The, the quality they've got on the bench, you, you, you can you can it's go, you can put there's a there's a front three there. Mate. You take another front three, put another front three on. It's just phenomenal what they have got. I mean, truly phenomenal what they have got. Um, and they seem, they seem a, a decent group as well. Uh, yeah. But they, 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 it's it, it, again, but the wonderful thing about the modern football because of the pitches, tackling from behind, is banned and all that kind of stuff. That the best players are winning, and that's what we want to see: the best players winning. For years, years ago, it was the strongest team, the quickest team, uh, more efficient team. But the best players, what we're what, what we're seeing in, in, in football now, is as good as I've ever seen. Regularly, yeah. pace, technique, moves, passes, goals. Um, it's the best I've ever seen. It's not to say that the players I played with wouldn't have been great at this, this level. They would be. Uh, they would have been if they'd been had that the pitches, the tackling, the fitness level you get now. Um, matter of fact, if alcohol was banned. Man United would have, would have won the league a few times, but alcohol wasn't banned in the 80s. So it's kind of a, a drawback. <laughs> but wow, what good fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we had a few of those seasons as well. <laughs> what good fun. They can't get away with that anymore. No. Um, no why do you think it is, Gordon, then when we've got a manager, a former manager like yourself on, why do you think it is that you've got people like, Big Sam, like Neil Warnock, they keep coming back and you know, you know they do not need the money. So what is it about management that's got this addictive quality? I don't know, you, you have to ask them. It might be the same thing I was telling you, but they like, they like being in that environment, you know? And if you've got nothing to fill your time, and I'm not saying the two boys have got nothing to fill their time, but the guys are talking about, that, that's, some, I'm afraid that some managers, that's all they know, is being on that, you know, that treadmill and working in every day. Unfortunately, as I said to you earlier, I, I, I fill my life with other things. I've plenty going on. Um, if you could transfer me every day to a training ground with a group of players, brilliant. You know, if you could beam me up and take me to there and work with that and put it, and then take me home at one o'clock <laughs> and let me do my own thing, I'll <laughs> be back. But the rest of it is a nonsense. But they boys seem to enjoy the nonsense, Sam and uh, and Neil Warnock. Um, but there's times where, yeah, you know, I, I, sometimes I see managers staying on and on, it's no there too, who just stay on for the sake of staying on. But there's nothing else. And it can be sad at times because if you've not got that drive and hunger, then it gets to the players. If you're only doing it for yourself or keeping yourself busy about it, you have to be doing it, the job, to make people better. And you have to have an anger. If you lose that anger, it's no worthwhile because no matter how the manager you talk about, Fingers, Ferguson's, all these guys, they had an anger. It showed in different ways, but they had this drive and anger. Once you lose it, it can seep through the players and it's no there anymore, that drive. And it gets to them 
and they can suss it. And what happens is they don't realise it, but they're falling away at the same time because that drive and anger from the manager is not there anymore. Oh, brilliant. Gordon, it's been a pleasure having you on, mate. Thank you very much. Well, thank you Good very much. Good luck with bringing the uh, the kids through as well. You know, hopefully that's um, that sounds a great topic. It's it sounds a great project. It's going great there. The, the yeah. kids are great. They're coming on wonderfully, wonderfully. Brilliant. Good. Nice anyway, one, mate. Great Thanks to very much. See you later. Thanks, Gordon. See you, mate. Bye. 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 Bye